Okay there, hi guys. Welcome back to another video. Um, hi. <laughs> My name is Drogs. This is uh, Fully Painted Miniatures, and this is part of a series I'm doing of solo Let's Plays for Aeon's End, 2nd Edition. <clears throat> so I've already defeated the Rageborn, and uh, the last video was the Carapace Queen. Um, definitely had technical issues on both of those videos, so... If you haven't seen them, you probably shouldn't bother going back and rewatching them. Um, so hopefully you can see the board a little bit better in this video. Uh, we'll see how that goes. At least you can see the hands. Um, haven't really been able to see those in the previous videos. So the um, I'm going up against the Crooked Mask this time. Right here. He's a difficulty five. Um, nemesis, whose backstory is the elders say there is a God for every aspect of existence, every creature, every force. If this is true, then the crooked mask's domain is that of corruption, for the weapon he wields is brought by temptation. How do we slay a God, especially one with such a dark influence over the weaker survivors among us? When we have endured on so little for so long, how do we hold back when what we need most seems to be offered so freely? Many in Gravehold murmur that behind its grim visage lies a cruel and desolate grin. There is no, there is a noise it makes, a sort of laugh one can hear just under the bells and the screams. <clears throat> Excuse me, as far as my, my throat goes, it's zero degrees outside right now and uh, my throat's a little dry. Um... <clears throat> for our heroes, we're going to be going with Gian. Um, just so you guys are aware, I have never played against Crooked Mask, and I have never used either of these mages, so this is going to be a lot of firsts for me. Um, Gian is considered a Breach Mage Orphan. Starting card, she's going to start with a Moonstone Shard, which is a gem, gains uh, one power, can also gain an additional power only for the purchasing of a gem, however. So that's pretty cool. Um, she also starts with two crystals and two sparks, and then her deck starts as three crystals with two sparks. And her special ability <clears throat> allows her to cast any player's prep spell without discarding it, and then cast that prepared spell again as normal. So it's a double cast, basically. And her backstory, or I don't know if that's a girl or a guy, actually. It kind of looks like a girl. Let's see. Father died, the orb. I took it in my hands, then the quiet was upon me. Orphan, then the mages. I learned the sister words, the spark, but never spoke them. Like, Fid like Fidraxia, I see. It changed me. There are many worlds. The nameless are a scourge to all. So war. Once I was born, soon I will save them, then become nothing. Everything in between is just waiting. A web. It's all a web. All right. Um, I'm going to call her a girl. Oh, that's, that's cool. I didn't notice this. She actually only needs four charges for her special ability. Which makes sense. It's it's weaker than um, most of the other breach mages from what I've seen, and she also starts with two open breaches, which is really cool. Her third breach costs nine to open. Her fourth breach costs ten. And then, as the second hero, <clears throat> we have Lash, breach mage scout. Uh, he starts with Quartz Shard, which is a gem, gains one power. Reveal the top card of the turn order deck. You may place that card on the bottom or the top of the turn order deck. If you reveal the player turn order card, gain an additional power. So I like that one a lot. That's pretty good. Um, also starts with three crystals and a spark. And then deck is the same, three crystals with two sparks. And special ability is going to be Quicken Thought. Activate during any player's main phase. 
Shuffle any player's turn order card into the turn order deck. That player suffers one damage. So that basically um, gives a player another turn within a round. So that, that mage will get um, three turns that round instead of two. So very cool. And his... Oh, yeah. Starts with open breach one. Two is... Uh, breach two is going to cost five power to open. Breach three, nine. Breach four, seven. So that one's actually cheaper than the third, which is kind of cool. And then his story, the background. Like the jagged rocks around us, these are hard times. You can see it reflected in the eyes of even the hardiest folk. The fog of constant dread looming large within them. But me, I laugh, I smile. For any day is worth living well, no? What other use would it be? We are the lucky ones, though our journey may be paved with strife. I say laugh anyway. Smile anyway. Let my voice be heard rising against the will of the cave, echoing into nothing. If today to be my last, then let it also be my best. Often I stare down at the city from the balustrade, balustrade, the dirt market being my favorite place to contemplate. The good people there, peddling their wares, the cacophony of their haggling, the scent of salted meat and brine. And I think to myself, the world does go on. And so it does, in spite of our trials, our great adversity. The people in the market, they still find it within themselves to sit at their stall and hope for a good day's profit, to savor the banter of a spirited haggle, to cook a simple yet tasty meal to share with loved ones. And at night in their hovels, they dream against the dark. There is no beauty in this world. Or any other great, or any other greater than that. Yeah, seems like a good guy. All right. So I didn't. Re I like reading the story in the background. Um, there isn't really a story in in the instruction books or anything. It's really just what you see on the cards. And I didn't realize till today there's actually fluff on all the cards as well. It's this real little fine print at the bottom. I thought it was just like a disclaimer. My eyes just glossed over it. So I'm going to start reading those as well um, when we get to new cards. So just to go through the starting cards. Uh, Gian's unique starting card, the Moonstone Shard. Like many children of Gravehold, Gian was left an orphan, stricken silent by the very thing that took her father's light. Okay, starting crystal, the aether is trapped in even the simplest of stones. Now these gems grant us the same power that put our world low. And spark. A spark is all that is necessary to rouse the flame. And lashes, unique card. Court shard. Laughter is scarce these days in Greyfield. Yet Lash manages to conjure a smile in most he meets. Just gives you a little bit more background. We'll go through the, the store cards as we do those. And the enemy cards as they come up. So as usual, I'm going to do randomizers. We will start with gems. Three gems, two relics, four spells, as always. I'm not actually sure if you if that's even required. Um, the rule book actually just says it's a guideline and you could kind of do what you want. So I guess technically you could just throw like two gems and six spells up there and one relic or something like that. But I like the three, two, uh, four. Um, that's a good, I think that's a good number. It seems to work. So I'm, I'm not going to deviate from it. All right. First card, first wood amber. When you gain this, you may place it on top of your deck. Gain two power. Clouded Sapphire, gain three power. If this is the first time you've played Clouded Sapphire this turn, any ally gains one charge for six cost. And Searing Ruby, cost four, gain two power. Gain an additional power that can then can only be used to gain a spell. Very nice. So I like that's a that's a good combination. 
I am happy with those. And now we have our relics. I'm not the best shuffler, never have been. But you know, it's not that many cards, so you just kind of get them mixed up. And let's see what we get. Flexing Dagger, third game in a row. <laughs> um, two costs. The next time you focus or open a breach this turn, it costs three less power. Or destroy this, deal one damage. Mage's Talisman, five power. Gain one charge. An ally gains one charge. I like that. That's cool. I haven't seen that one yet. All right, enough of the spells. These cards don't have flavor text on them because they are randomizers. So when I get the real cards out, I'll go through the store and just kind of read what they say about each one. And I also pre-shuffled these off camera this time. Um, between the first game and second game, I only shuffled them on camera. I ended up with some of the same cards. Um, I, didn't, I didn't think it was good enough of a shuffle, but so I wanted to do some off camera to make sure it got truly random, but I also wanted to still do it on camera. So Oblivion Swell, five cost. While prepped once per turn during your main phase, you may gain one power. So basically you leave it prepped instead of casting it and it generates power for you. Cast, deal two damage. You may discard a gem. If you do, do deal additional damage equal to its cost. That's a nice card, especially when we have Clouded Sapphire, so it can add six damage to it. Wildfire Whip had this last game. Six cost spell. While prepped during your main phase, you may spend two power to cast any player's prepared spell. Hmm. Also deals four damage. Lava Tendril, four cost. While prepped at the end of your casting phase, deal one damage. Cast, deal three. So that's another one that benefits from just being left prepped. And Dark Fire, five cost. What is this? Cast, discard up to two cards in your hand. Deal three damage for each card discarded this way. So this might be useful because I don't see any way to destroy cards in this deck. I really like destroying cards. Um, I hate the starter cards, essentially. Um, I'm a big fan of getting rid of them. Helped me out a lot last game. And that's not going to be an option this game, so if you're... if I'm stuck with a bunch of um, starter cards, you know, having a way to discard them and actually have them be useful um, sounds nice. So we'll start with our three gems. First with Amber. Flavor text. Once the trees of Riswood towered ancient and beautiful. These polished bits of their amber is all that remains behind that memory. Searing Ruby. Some use these to heat and light their hovels against the dark of the cave. Others know that within these gems lies a fire that can be tamed. And the Sapphire. They say if you look closely, the shadows of the world that was is imprisoned within. Player token and life up. All right, so let's get the relics. Flexing dagger. So, if you are watching any of these videos. Um, leave a comment, let me know how, how you like them, what I can do to improve, all that. I'm a pretty much a beginner at all this stuff. 
board gaming, miniature painting, and <laughs> video making. So, um, yeah, let me know what I'm doing wrong, what I can do to make it a more enjoyable experience for you. So first we have Flexing Dagger. Forge from an from unstable void ore. The blade shifts with the will of its wielder. Okay. Then Mage's Talisman. The sister mages of the old world wear their talismans as a symbol of their station and a warning to those that would challenge them. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'm also pretty technology illiterate um, when it comes to that. Man, there's a lot of spells I have not seen yet. I love the artwork on these cards, though. Bear with me. If you prefer um, me to not shuffle and do these in the video and just have it set up ready to go, I can do that as well. Just let me know in the comments. Um, so first, oh, actually I'm not gonna do it in that order. I'm gonna do it by cost. First we're gonna start with Lava Tendril. My turn. <laughs> That's all it says. And we're going to go with Dark Fire. Zaxos always says, to come back to the light, we must first visit the shadow. Then Oblivion Swell. Many folk have made their fortune harvesting gems. The very breaches through which the nameless come bestow the stones with strange properties. And our sixth cost... Wildfire Whip. Sometimes a little motivation is needed for dire situations. Some of these quotes have um, names of people on them of, of who's saying the thing. I'm not going to go into that much detail for the most part. All right, going to put my randomizers away and we're going to start up the game. This was just, I was using that to place to uh, get the placement right. Okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't go over the rules for Crooked Mask. So I have not played him yet before. So he's difficulty five. He's got 70 hit points. And his Unleash ability gives a player a corruption, which is then placed on top of their deck. The player then takes their discard pile and shuffles it into their deck. So it forces the player to shuffle. And there are a set here. These are the corruption cards. I think there's 11 or 12 of them that cause various bad things to happen to the players. I haven't read through them yet. Um, when Additional rules. When a corruption is destroyed, it goes back into the corruption deck on the bottom. If the player is um, supposed to gain a corruption and the deck is empty, Gravehold instead suffers two damage. At the start of each player's turn, before that player's casting phase, the player resolves all corruptions in their hand, in any order. At the end of the player's main phase, the player resolves all corruptions that they drew within that turn. Um, corruptions may not be played at any other time. And when a player gains a corruption, the player may not look at the corruption until it is, unless it is placed in their hand. Okay, so I have no idea how this is going to go. We're going to just try it and see. All right, we're starting with Nemesis. First card. Tempt. The player with the most crystals in hand discards all of their crystals. Jeez. The player with the most crystals in hand discards all of their crystals, suffers three damage, and gains a card from any supply pile that costs four power or less. And that has flavor text. There is a dust that fills the air when a hole is torn through the wall of the world. For some, it is just that, dust. But for others, 
It warps the mind and grants strange power. Tempt. Okay, so that's going to attack Lash, since she has three crystals. So these three crystals all get discarded. She take or he takes three damage. It, that looks like a female face to me. I can tell from the chest it's a guy, but looks like a looks like a female. All right, and I get to gain a card four or less. So I'm gonna gain um, Searing Ruby. For free. All right. Now it is Lash's turn. Um, prep Spark. And use Court Shard. Gain one power and it lets her reveal the turn order deck to one. So that grants her, I'm gonna leave that there um, instead of putting it at the bottom, and it grants her an additional power. Which gives her two to buy a flexing dagger. And then for the Clash's next turn, it's going to have three crystals and two sparks. Now, next turn order is going to go to Gian. Going to prep both of her sparks, or his sparks, I'm not really sure. And then these are worth three power, four if I want to acquire crystal. So I will do that. I will acquire Searing Ruby. Put that down. Goes on top. And then her next five cards are going to be three crystals and two sparks. And we get Nemesis again. Minion, the Corrupter. When this minion suffers damage, the player who dealt that damage gains a corruption and places it on top of the deck. Hmm. Persistent, Gravehold suffers one damage, has six life, and the story is the Corruptors are but a shadow of the Crooked Mask, bringing madness that of all, to all that have endured its pollution. All right. Get six health tokens on it. There we go. And we're getting one again. <sighs> so, as far as the Corruptor, I don't really think I want to attack it right now. Um, every time you do damage to it, you gain a Corruption. So if I start using Sparks, I'm just going to murder my own players. I really want to wait until I can at least hit it for like four damage or so. Higher damage spells. So I'm going to cast both sparks um, on the Crooked Mask itself. It's going to be two damage. Bringing it to 68. And then going to prep two more sparks. And with the three crystals, I'm going to buy Vriswood Ember. Which goes on top of your deck. So that will go immediately into our next hand. Along with one, two, three, four. Along with Searing Ruby, Moonstone Shard, and two crystals. And then Lash's turn. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to cast that spark, do one damage to the Crooked Mask. He's going to prep one spark yeah and then um, so he's going to end up holding on to that other spark and I'm going to use the three for Verswood Amber. So it's going to start with those two for his next turn, as well as three crystals. So 
So the good thing about the Corruptor is it only does, all it does is one damage to Greyfold. It's not that big of a deal to just let it sit there and continue to damage the city um, for a few turns. It's annoying, um, but honestly, you're probably best off waiting in, if you have a way to do um, six damage in one shot, like with Dark Fire, or you could do that with Oblivion Swell with a Searing Ruby. Either of those would work. Okay, Let's see who goes first. Okay, we're gonna go with Jan. He's gonna cast two sparks for two damage to Crooked Mask. Bring him down to 65. I don't have anything to prep. So these are worth two. This is worth two on a gem. This is worth three on a spell. And this is worth two. So, I don't want to do that. So that's worth four. I then have seven. That could go up to nine as long as I get a spell and a gem. Right? Yeah, that's right. So in that case... I will buy Oblivion Swell and Searing Ruby. I'm putting them together. Hopefully, might have to wait a little bit, a few turns. So that will do for that. And I'll put that in the middle. It's a good chance that I'm going to get a okay. Then for her next turn, one, two, three, four, five, three crystals, two sparks. And then we're going with Lash. I'm going to cast that spark, bring Crooked Mass down to 64. He's going to prep another spark. And then this is five power from these gems. I'm going to use that five power to buy a dark fire. So I like doing that because now I can place the dark fire right near the crystals. So it will have something to cast them with. Well, I guess there is a turn in between, right? And it's next turn. Flash is next turn. Searing Ruby, Flexing Dagger, Quartz Shard, Spark, and a Crystal. Okay. And then Nemesis goes. So first it activates the Corruptor. Gravehold suffers one damage. Draw a card. Woven Sky. Basic. Uh, to discard, discard three cards in your hand. Power two, unleash. Any player suffers four damage. Nim looked up in awe as Malister pointed to the roiling air of at the dome of the cave. Though that those boys are stars. Woven sky. So that will activate next round. One. Yan goes. I'm gonna prep both sparks. And with that, those three I'm going to purchase a Vriswood Amber. Which is gonna go into our next hand. Along with one, two, three, four. Searing Ruby, Oblivion Swell, two sparks. Hmm. Okay. Then Nemesis goes again. First, the Corruptor is going to do one damage to Greyfold. And Woven Sky is going to become. Uh, knock off one of its counters. Oh. I didn't draw a card. Burden. The players collectively gain two corruptions and place them on top of their decks. Any player focuses a breach. Hmm. Interesting. So, each player is going to 
gain a corruption on top of their deck. And any player can focus a breach. I'm actually going to go with Jan on that one. So that she can... I'm going to count that as... Uh, Oh, whatever. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, and the text on that is the only thing that smiles more than me. Uh, Lash says that. Talking about the crooked mask. Okay. I need more coffee today. Now, Lash's turn. Activate Spark. Deal one damage to Crooked Mask. I kind of want to get rid of that Balloon Sky. So I need to discard three cards. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to discard Quartz Shard, Spark, and Crystal. Sorry, that took me so long to the side. Um, and get rid of Woven Sky. I don't want that to activate. I'm then going to use Flexing Dagger to focus that Breach for free. And then I'm going to use Searing Ruby. I'm, I don't have enough to afford a spell, but I can buy another Flexing Dagger. All right, that's three cards. So for her next turn, gonna have a corruption card, which I'll read when his turn comes up. Dark fire, spark, and two crystals. So not terrible. Um, I'm not in love with the cards I've been able to afford so far. I got a decent amount of gems going on, so that's nice. Um, one spell, I think, each. One, maybe two. I haven't been able to get any Mage's Talismans yet. All right, so Lash is going to go. First, we're going to read this Corruption card. Nothingness. Discard two non-Corruption cards. Suffer two damage. Shuffle any player's turn order card into the turn order deck. Destroy this. The Crooked ma Mask shackles the self. Okay. So. Hmm. So that's going to discard both crystals. But I get to reshuffle turn order card back into the deck. So this is kind of like a free turn, which is a good thing because I'm not going to get to really do anything. Except destroy this card. So as this gets destroyed, it goes back into the deck. So the only thing I can do is prep that. Dark fire, it's gonna keep the spark. Draw four more. First with amber and three crystals. Then go again. Okay, dark fire. I'm gonna cast, discard two cards in my hand, two crystals. It's gonna do six damage and destroy that corruptor. 
Let me actually snap. So that's good. Only he only managed to do two damage to Grayfold, so got rid of him pretty quick. I'm then gonna prep Spark, and I have three power to spend, which I will use on another Versewood, since my only three power card in the store. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Lash's next turn will have the Versewood Amber, two Sparks, Crystal, and a Quartz Shard. But Jan's going first. You got two sparks. Cast both of those, doing two damage. Bringing crooked mass to sixty-one. So I'm gonna prep oblivion swell and spark. And I have four power, five if I use it to get a spell. So I will use that to get another Oblivion Swell. Hold on to the spark. Next turn is going to have a Corruption. Spark, Moonstone, Versewood, and Ruby. And goes again. So we start with the Corruption card. Reckless Might. Gain a relic from any relic supply pile and place it on top of your deck. Suffer damage equal to half its cost. Round it up. Destroy this. So basically, uh, oh, and then it says, uh, the Crooked Mask consumes our fear of extermination. So essentially, I can take a Flexing Dagger and take one damage, or Mage's Talisman take three So I will take Flexing Dagger. And it says place it on top of your deck. Although I do really want Mage's Talisman. Um, I don't see any way in this game to heal. So there I will say if you're if you're able to. Choose your cards for your game. There's a few things I would do. I would have a variety of uh, price points. So like three, four, six is good for gems. Two and five is good on the um, talismans. Four, five, five, six isn't awful. But, you you know, if I could have maybe a three or a seven, or, you know, just give it a little bit more variety. Um, these aren't bad. I, I don't, I, I honestly don't really want to complain about either any of these. But if you ended up with like three high cost gems, for example, where your cheapest one was four or five, that's a little rough. Um, it's hard to get your engine going doing that. Also, um, I would always want to keep something in your game that allows you to um, destroy a card and something that allows you to heal. Um, that doesn't have to be a card. It can be, um, there are two characters that can heal. Brahma has a special ability that allows her to heal four. One of the other characters has um, her special unique card, heals one. That's enough. But if you don't have those, it's nice to have, um, there's one or two cards, I believe, spells that can heal. All right, so Oblivion Swell. I might just leave that because that that grants me yeah I'll just so I'm gonna cast a spark it does one damage so I now have the crooked mass down to 60 not bad I'm gonna leave this prepped which gives me an additional power moonstone I'm gonna prep the spark moonstone grants me one Briswood grants me two, um, one plus an additional one for a gem Amber's two, Ruby's two, plus an additional one for a spell. So that's uh, five, six power, plus an additional one for a uh, gem or a spell. Yeah, so I will buy Searing Ruby, 
3 plus the additional point for the spell, and Lava Tundra. Yeah. And then Jan's next five. Four Crystals and Flexing Dagger. Nemesis gets to go. There's nothing on the board set up for him. So we draw a card. Slaughter. Unleash. Greyfold suffers three damage. We have nothing left to lose but our lives. Missed the Breach Mage Captain. All right, so Greyfold suffers three damage, bringing it down to 25. And Crooked Mask unleashes. Any player gains a corruption and places it on top of their deck and then shuffles their discard pile into their deck. Um, hmm. I'll give it to Lash. So this is one of the only time, I think this is the first time I'm actually playing this, that uh, I've seen an effect that makes you shuffle your deck. So completely will screw up your rhythm. And we will see how that goes. Okay. Nemesis goes again. Skewer, unleash. Any player suffers three damage and draws a card. It takes years to train a breach mage properly but only in a second to snuff one out. Malister. And then it's a skewer. So first and unleashes, so I guess I'll give it to Jan, just to be fair. So we both get to shuffle their decks. And then suffer three damage. I'll, I'll use that on GM as well. It doesn't have to be the same mage, from what I can see. I don't know if I got caught on camera. I didn't see it. All right. So Jan's going to suffer three damage. And draw a card. Oh, crystal. And now it is Lash's turn. Lash is going to cast Spark for one damage. Bring Crooked Mask to 59. Prep Spark. And has four, potentially five power. Oops, sorry. I gotta shuffle these. I didn't mean to look at that. I, I did that wrong. Um, reveal the top card of the turn order deck. Two, okay. Um, so that gains an additional power. So four, or two, four, five. Uh, yeah, okay. So I will spend two to focus second breach. So I can prep the spark to it. And then three on the verse hood going on to the top of my deck. Watch his next turn. First wood, Searing Ruby, Dark Fire, and two crystals. And I happen to know that Lash is going next. So we're going to cast both Sparks. Another two damage. So Sparks are not useless. I, that's all I've used on him. And he's down to 57 already. From 70. I'm going to prep Dark Fire. And I have four, six power, seven if I use it to gain a spell. Hmm. 
I'm going to take Oblivion Swell with a Flexing Dagger. Turn corruption. We'll see how that goes. All right, Nemesis goes first. Vex, discard the top two cards of the Nemesis deck. Ooh. For each tier three Nemesis card discarded this way, Gravehold suffers four damage. So this is a tier two card, but it's actually the first tier two card. So Pulverizing Array and Lay Waste are both getting discarded. Neither are tier three. So this is much more dangerous if it's at the end of the Tier 2s. It is one thing to swing a sword or beckon flame from the void, but it is another act indeed to fight blindly madness from within. Brahma. Okay. Nemesis goes again. Board's empty. Needle Maw. Persistent. Gravehold suffers 2 damage. 11 life. The teeth of this beast make a fine trophy. The trick is keeping all of your fingers in the taking of them. Reeve, Breach Mage Elite. 11 health points. Let's get that there. But at least Crooked Mask is done for the round. So one. Okay, first we're going to start with Oblivion Swell. Oh, no. I guess I'm going to leave that. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So cast a spark, take do one damage to the needle moth. It's okay, boy. Yeah. Rolo thinks he hears something. But everything's fine. There's nobody out there. I will then use flexing dagger to focus. My third breach. And then I have five crystals here, plus an additional power from Oblivion Swell, giving me six power. And I will use that to buy Wildfire Whip. And then Jan's gonna go again. Oh, here comes the Corruption card that we shuffled in last time. Insatiable Avarice. Suffer two damage. Place a gem from the least expensive gem supply pile and place it in your hand. Destroy this. The Crooked Mask blesses the co Covetous. So that's going to drop her to four life. So this is, I think, where I'm going to get in trouble. Um, I don't... Both of my previous two games... I managed to beat the Nemesis without either player becoming exhausted. I don't see that happening this time. So this goes directly into my hand, Versewood Amber. I'm going to prep another Oblivion Swell. Hmm. I guess I'll... I don't really want to use the sparks. It's kind of annoying. Um, hmm. I don't like that hand. Mm. All right, I will cast I'll cast Oblivion Swell and sacrifice the Ruby. It's going to do six damage to the Needle Maw. I 
I will then prep one spark. I'll hold on the other one and I'll use the last two points for my Vriswood Amber to buy a flexing dagger. I want to get my breeches open. All right. Draws four cards. Searing Ruby, Lava Tendril, Moonstone Shard, and a Spark. So because of the shuffles, it has kind of screwed me up. I don't, I don't strictly keep track of, you know, what cards I have, you know, the order. I don't plan it out too much, but I guess I do subconsciously a little bit. Get a kind of a vibe for it. All right. And then we're going to, with Lash, we've got another Corruption card. Suffer one damage, gain one charge, destroy this. The Crooked Mask venerates those who wield destruction. So the good thing about the Corruption cards is they tend to have a benefit as well as... What, how much damage was it? One damage. Um, they hurt you and help you at the same time. So not the worst thing I've ever seen. But yeah, I, I definitely expect at least one of these um, heroes to become exhausted this time. I'm down to four and six, and I don't have any healing. Nemesis goes first. Gravehold suffers two damage, bringing it to 23. Then draw a card. Twisting Madness. To discard, draw four cards in hand and draw one card. Discard four cards in hand and draw one card. Power two. Gravehold gains three life. Crooked Mask gains 13 life. It is, is it laughing at us? Breach Prince. So I probably want to get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. All right. Go with Lash. Has four cards. Did I? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why do I have four cards? What did I do? I played that corruption card, right? And then I didn't play my turn. Wow. Okay. Well, I forgot, so my fault, my penalty. I can't do anything about it. Um... I'm going to use Dark Fire. I'm going to get rid of both crystals. And I'm going to use that to kill the Needlemaw. Should It would be six damage. And then I will use both Flexing Daggers. Open or Focus Breach. So that's going to allow me to open... Second breach, as well as focus this third one. And for the next turn, Riswood Ember Crystal, Spark, another Riswood Quartz Shard. Okay. And then Jan. Cast the spark, first of all, do one damage. Yeah. Prep the lava tendril. Now I'm going to discard all four to get rid of Twisting Madness, which also allows me to draw one card, Searing Ruby. So two or three that can be used to gain a spell. I can't gain a spell for three. I only can get two. So I'm going to get a charge since that's the only thing I can do with it. All right. Nemesis. Nothing on the board. Card. Cauterizer. 
minion, three life. When damage is dealt to this minion, reduce that damage to one. So you need to attack it three separate times. Any player who suffers damage, any player suffers damage equal to this minion's current life. Hack away all you like, youngling. It'll only grow back another, whatever that part is. So, sparks are good for getting rid of that thing. I need to get rid of him as soon as possible because my life is not high. All right, so Gian again. So the first two cards are going to be both Riswood Ambers. As well as Spark, Wildfire Whip, and a Crystal. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to use Oblivion Swell, deal one damage. I'm going to leave Lava Tendril up there. It's still going to do a damage. Um, one damage for not casting it, which is nice. Then I am going to prep Wildfire Whip, and I'm going to spend five power to open Third Breach, which allows me to prep Spark. And then Lash's turn. Okay, nothing prepped. You know, so I will prep a spark. And I have four, five, six power. I get to reveal the top of the turn order card to see if I get seven. It is Nemesis, so I do not get seven, but I'm allowed to put that on the bottom of the deck, so I'm going to. So six. And I'll buy Clouded Sapphire. Did I, why did I do that? I wasn't thinking. Sorry, guys. I'm not on the top of my game today at all. So, one, two, three, four, five. So, Lash's next turn is going to have two Flexing Daggers, two Crystals, and a Dark Fire. Gian is set up for four Crystals and a Flexing Dagger. And Nemesis goes first. So first, it's going to activate the Cauterizer. Any player suffers damage, luckily. Got it down to one. So Jan's going to take that. Or uh, Lash, sorry. And then Dispel. Attack, unleash twice. The player with the most prep spells discards their most expensive prep spell. That's annoying. Okay. I'm going to do both of them again, to be fair. So they both gain... Corruption card, and then I'll shuffle their discard. Outside is literally covered in snow. There's nobody around. There's no cars. There's no leaves. There's no squirrels. I, I don't know what they're, they're thinking about. Okay. So, and then player with the most prep spells discards the most expensive prep spell. That would be Jan with Wildfire Whip. Good news is I know Nemesis is going in the last for the rest of that. Okay. Lash. First is going to start with the spark and is going to kill the cauterizer. Get rid of that. And it's going to prep dark fire. 
Got two flexing daggers, two crystals. Hmm. Mm. So I'm going to use both flexing daggers and one crystal. It's actually going to allow me to open Forge Breach. The other crystal is going to be wasted. Three, four, five. Two crystals, wristwood, quartz, or three crystals, sorry. Uh, wristwood, amber, and a quartz shard for the next turn. But Jan's going first. Lava Tendril, Spark, gonna cast that. It's gonna deal two damage because of the plus one. Crooked Mask. And then Flexing Dagger reduces cost by three. So I'm going to use that with one of my crystals. And then the other three gives me three power, which I'll use to buy Vriswood. Amber. Next turn, we'll start with the Vriswood. Oh, well. So next turn, it's three Vriswood Ambers, one crystal. Oh, and it also did one damage. Sorry. From the Lava Tundra. <laughs> Not being cast. Goes again. All right. I'm going to prep Oblivion Swell. Should prep it here. Going to deal one damage from not casting Lava Tundra. And then I will gain six, seven power, eight power. Hmm. I'm going to grab Wildfire Whip and a charge. I really want to start grabbing those mad, those Mage's Talismans, but I'm not going to use seven feet power on it. And I can't do anything with those three. Alright, next turn is going to be Spark, two Sparks, String Ruby, Moonstone, two Rubies, and Moonstone Shark. And Lash's turn before the Nemesis is going to end up going next. So we're going to use Dark Fate, cast that, discard two Crystals, that's going to do six damage, bringing Crooked Mask. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, hopefully this is still recording. I had to pause it for a second there. Somebody actually uh, came to the door that I had to let in. Um, I haven't played anything still in the middle of Lash's turn. I just kind of neat uh, reorganized and made everything a little neater. The cards that were falling everywhere. Okay, so I used the Oblivion Swell, or the Dark Fire, rather, to do six damage, sacrificing the two crystals. I now have Riswood, Quartz Shard, Crystal. That gives me four. Um, yeah. Four power. So I will buy a Lava Tendril. One, two, three, four, five. Then Lash's next turn. It starts with Corruption. So we'll see what that happens on his next turn. And the Nemesis is going to go. Board is empty. It's a minion. Tier 2. Pain Sower. Never seen this one before. Any player suffers 2 damage. A different player focuses a breach. Oh, this is a Crooked Mass specific minion. Even its beasts seem to delight in lunacy. So it's kind of a chaotic creature to fight. This is, this is definitely... Um, in my opinion, the most fun boss battle I've had so far. I'm enjoying this. The Carapace Queen was just stressful. That was not. Rageborn was fine. Um, was fun, very straightforward, kind of brutish. Carapace Queen just, oh man, that extra 
I was just terrified of those extra husks coming into play and just instant killing me. Because that's what happened the first time I tried to play. Um, this is pretty fun. All right, Nemesis. So he goes first. Uh, any player focuses or takes two damage will have Lash take the damage. Bring him to three life. I think there's a good chance I lose this game, though. Different player focuses a breach. And then draws a card. Unleash twice. Gravehold suffers four damage. So unleash twice. Oh, this is topple. Look out. Okay. So that means they each gain a corruption card. And shuffle their discard into their deck. Sharp. I probably shouldn't be shuffling off camera, but that's fine. You know what I think about? I haven't even got close to special powers for either of them. I just hasn't worked out. And then Gravehold suffers four damage, bringing me to 19. All right. GM, player one. Okay. Well, let's see if I want Cassie's first. This can do up to six, and this can do three. There's nine or eleven life. Hmm. I kind of have to. Yeah. So I'm gonna cast that for three damage. I'm gonna cast a Blooming yeah. Swell plus the Searing Ruby for six. Doing nine damage, bringing Pain Sower down to two hit points. I don't really have a choice, just the life points are so low on my characters that um, that's probably how I'm going to lose, is they're both going to die. And now I have Searing Ruby and Moonstone Shard, so that's three power, plus one for a spell, plus one for a gem. So... I'll take Lava Tendril. I am getting pretty close, I think, actually, to tier three cards, and I do not have my engines built up sufficiently to really deal with that. Two, three, four, five. So we'll see. Maybe I can pull out one. On next turn, Corruption, Flexing Dagger, Crystal, and Spark. And we're going with Lash. That's corruption. Suffer one damage, deal two damage, destroy this. The Crooked Mask preaches pain as virtue. So the good news is, he has two life. So, I'm going to use that to kill Pain Sower. The Lash goes from three hit points to two. Then it's going to prep spark and oblivion swell and then has four power five for a spell so i would love to grab an ages talisman but don't have it so we're gonna go with oblivion swell again two three four five let's go dark fate court shard versus wood a lot of starting cards all right GN with a corruption, endless hunger. Gravehold suffers three damage, bringing me to 16. Gain two life. Hmm. Destroy this. Goes back up to six. The crooked mass bestows an empty greed that cannot be slaked. 
Okay, I'm going to cast both sparks. It's going to total for three damage. To equip the mask. I'll prep another spark. F3. I'll destroy this for one damage as well. And then I will spend three power, four for a spell. I'll buy Lava Tendril. And next turn, three verse wood ambers and a bleeding spell and a crystal. Alright, and Lash goes next. So first gonna cast Spark for two. Bring Crooked Mast on the 40. I'll leave that for now. We're going to prep Spark and Dark Fire. And this is going to give me 3, 4 power. Plus the 1 from Blue Nets Well. So I can finally buy a Mage of Stalin's one for 5. I'm liking it. I'm going to have a corruption card next turn. Along with flexing dagger, two crystals, and a spark. Next turn is Nemesis. Board is empty. Doomagus. To discard, spend seven power. Power one. The player with the most charges suffers four damage and loses all of their charges. There is a saying, all wars must end. Okay, so that's going to hit Jan. Won't kill her, but pretty close. I keep reflexively uh, shuffling to the side because my camera's right here and there's a stand that it's on going up. So it's sort of in my way and I have to, to get my hands around, I have to literally reach around. It's a little awkward to get used to. All right, Jan's gonna go first. Cast Spark for two. Bring Crooked Mass down to 38. Jan's gonna prep Livian Swell. And I have eight power total. Six from the Versewood Ambers, one from the Crystal, and one from the Oblivion Swell. That is gonna allow me <sighs> I will go with Wildfire. No, 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 never mind. Because I don't want, oh, yeah. I will use it to cancel the Doomagus. That's exactly what we'll do. Okay, next turn. And Gian is gonna have one, two, three, four, five. Two crystals, a verse wood, a wildfire whip, and spark on the next turn. Now it is Lash's turn, and he has a corruption card. Dire Wisdom. Gain a spell from any spell supply pile. Gain three corruptions, and then place them on top of your deck. Destroy this. The Crooked Mask enhances magical abilities even as it scatters the wits. That's crazy. Um, I'll gain wildfire whip. And then three, two, three corruption cards. Then last is going to cast Spark for two. Dark Fire is going to be cast, discarding two crystals. For six, bringing Crooked Mask all the way down to 30. So I got him a little below half health. So that's good. I don't have a gem to discard, so I'm going to hold. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'll just hold on to the living spell. I'm going to prep a spark. I'll use Flexing Dagger to focus Breach. Uh, 
And then on Lash's next turn, first one Amber Crystal and three Corruption cards. Scary. Nemesis is going to go first. Nothing on the board. Gather Darkness. Tier 3. Oh, I guess I was already in Tier 3. Any player places their discard pile on top of their deck, shuffles it, then destroys the top four cards. Then unleash twice. <sighs> I'm just going to go with Leash because he's only got two life. Jan's got six. I'm going to have him take everything. And we'll just see what happens. That means Firstwood Amber, Flexing Dagger, Spark, and a Blue Vein Swell all get destroyed. That's going to unleash. Put a Corruption card on. Shuffle. And put another Corruption card on. I figure he's dead anyway. Yeah, double damage to Grave Hole will suck, but if they both die, it's game over. Okay. Notice this again. Empty board. Afflict two different players, each gain two corruptions. And place them on top of their decks. Each of those players gains one life. It was as if a whisper echoed behind my eyes, tempting me to stay, stray into the raw abyss. Wow. Okay. So each player gains two corrections. And they both gain one life. There's only one corruption card even left. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, this is going to be crazy. Okay. Um, I'm going to hold on to that. I will prep. Want fire whip and spark. And then I have, I gained four power from this, as well as one from the Oblivion Spark. I'm going to grab, grab a mate, mate just tells me. Three Corruptions. So both of my players have three Corruptions. Craziness. Okay, Lash. Let's see what happens. Delirium Veil. Grayfold suffers two damage. Focus a breach. Destroy this. Suffer one damage. Return any card that costs zero from your discard pile into your hand. Don't have any. Destroy this. Suffer one damage. You may destroy a non corruption card in hand. Destroy this. Alright, I'll destroy a crystal. Not the end of the world but that only leaves me with the first one amber for a turn so I will cast a spark deal two damage bring them to 28 I'll cast the oblivion swell sacrificing first with amber for five damage to 23. So I'm just going to try to power through see if I can kill him before he kills me because that's getting crazy. And there's only one, two, three, four, five, six. So three more rounds. If I can survive three more rounds, I win the game. But he's going to die. Flash. See what happens with those three. 
I think I'm probably going to end up dying. So, yeah, just focus on damage. Right, Lash goes next. One, two, three, four, five. Two more corruption cards. Suffer one damage that exhausts him. Gain one. Loses all his charges because of the exhausted. Then he gains a charge because of this. Destroy. Suffer two damage. So that's four to Gravehold. Place a gem from the least expensive supply pile into my hand. Okay, Syrian Ruby. Let's try this. <laughs> There's my sapphire. I haven't seen that. Okay. So that gives me three, five, seven, eight, mm -hmm. ten for spells. Um, I'll buy Wildfire Whip and Lava Tundra. That's a corruption. So now Nemesis' turn. Rude mask, and it's a creature. Ruin Priest. I haven't seen this before either. Persistent. Any 17 health. Any player discards three non-corruption cards. That player gains three corruption cards and then places them into your hand. In the dark there is light, and in madness there is reason. That is crazy. So it discards three of your cards and gives you three corruption cards every time the nemesis gets a turn from now on. Unless I do 17 damage to it, which honestly is probably not even worth doing. Um, because that would mean I'd have to do 40 damage. Okay, two. Flash, Reckless Might. Gain a relic from any relic supply pile and place it on top of your deck. Suffer damage equal to half of its cost, round it up, destroy this. I only have one option, which is Mage's Talisman, which does three damage. Doubling to six. And Greyfold only has four life remaining. Not good. Alright, I'll prep a wildfire whip. And then I have three power left, which I'll use for a single charge. Corruption card. Two flex diagers, dark fire, mage talisman. Well. Okay. And now we get Gian, who has three corruption cards. <laughs> Suffer one damage. Deal two. To Crooked Mask. Destroy. Gravehold suffers three damage. Down to one. Gain two life. Right. Puts her up to eight. Destroy this. Grayfold suffers two damage. That's it. I only had one. Game over. So, um, not a terrible outing. The corruption cards definitely add up, especially as you get some of the combinations in the tier two, tier three. So, um, my mistake was going for, I think, cards like Oblivion Swell and Dark Fire that required discards. Um, just you don't the corruption cards already take away from your hand and you don't really have enough left over to keep doing that so i had trouble getting enough power to buy cloud sapphires mages talismans or wildfire whips and my other cards just kind of encouraged me to either discard or not cast them <laughs> um to try to make up the difference and i it's just not a I don't think it's a very good combination. 
So I will be trying in my next video, I will go up against the Crooked Mask again, but I will be swapping out the heroes to a different combination. And we will see how that goes. And different set of random cards. All right, well, uh, hope you enjoyed the video, at least somewhat. Um, if you made it this far, I mean, you're, you're, you're amazing. So, um, hope you enjoyed everything and leave a comment on anything you'd like me to, uh, change and, uh, have a great day. God bless.